We've stayed inside the first quadrant, okay? But the real superpower of using the unit circle is that I can go straight out of there. I can go not just from zero up to 90, but I can do obtuse angles over here, and I can go to reflex angles as well, even though none of them can fit inside my right angle triangles. And this is what tells you the, I mean, you guys are saying this ASTC thing, right? Do you remember that? A S T C. I want you to think about what that means and why it makes sense if you just think about these guys on the unit circle. Um, what does A mean? Like what, what's the A signify? All, 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 which means what? Sine, cos, and tan. It means all of the functions that you work with, sine and cos and tan, they're all positive. Well, think about why. Here's cos, right? Why must cos of whatever's in here be positive? Well, cos is the x coordinate, right? But everything in here is to the right. So all of the x coordinates are positive. Do you agree? And even before you start going around this way, do you see that's why this is c? Do you see why that's c? Because look, you're still talking about x coordinates, and you're still to the right. Do you notice that? So that's why those all have to be positive. Okay. What about sine? Why is sine positive in this quadrant? Because sine is about the y coordinate, right? And look, I'm above, I'm above the axis. That's up, that's positive, right? Which also explains why this is s. Do you see why this is s? Because look, I'm still above the axis. So the y coordinate had still better be positive, right? Okay, now I'll come over here. Down here in this quadrant, tell me about cos. Cos is negative because the x coordinate is on the negative side of the axis, right? What about sine? Also negative because you're on the bottom, which is the y coordinate, so that's negative. But then, of course, we defined, do you remember? I said you can call tan opposite on adjacent, but a better definition for tan is, do you recall? It's sine over cos, right? Well, if both of these numbers are negative, then what happens when you divide? They, the negative cancel and you get a positive. Okay. So that's what this means. It's just talking about points on the circle and whether you're horizontally positive or negative or vertically positive or negative. Okay. So, really, really quickly, let's just do an example straight off of here. Uh, pick an angle, any angle. How about, let's do 150. That's going to be about there. Okay. So on your diagram, add a new radius. And when I say 150 degrees, I'm thinking 150 degrees, I'm starting, where am I starting my measurement from? I'm starting down here, right, on the positive x-axis. I'm going to say that again and again and again so it gets into your mind. And then I rotate anti-clockwise around. Okay, is that all right? Now, I'm pointing that out. It's a little bit weird because in the previous exercise, um, I don't know how far you got into it, but there are some bearings questions. Not heaps, but there are some bearings questions. Now, bearings questions are not like this. Bearings don't start from here. Where did bearings start from? Bearings start from north, like that. And then from north, which direction do you go in? You go clockwise, like that, right? But on here, we're doing something completely different. You start over here on the, say it with me, positive x-axis, right? And then instead of measuring clockwise, you measure anti-clockwise, okay? So that's weird, but it's an important distinction that I want you to have in your head because people a lot of them So where's 150? Do you see where 150 is on my diagram? Where would you draw it? Can you do it with your hands? Can you see? It's gonna start from here and it's gonna go whip all the way around, right? So maybe you wanna draw this in with me. That's gonna be 150. Now, to help you work out sine, cos, and tan of 150 degrees, it helps to add in that right angled triangle, which is hiding, like that. See that? See how it's on the other side? Here's my right angle. Okay. So what I've made over here is a new triangle, which has a radius, a uh, hypotenuse rather, of 1. And it's got a little acute angle in here, next to the negative x-axis. What is this guy here? 30 degrees. That's really good because that's one of the exact values that you know, right? So in here, 
remember, the coordinates of this spot are cos theta sine theta. What was the theta I chose? It was, in, in this case, I went around 150 degrees. So therefore, instead of saying cos theta sine theta, I'll say cos 150 degrees and sine 150 degrees. Now, all I need to know is how far across am I and how high up am I, okay? So have a think, have a think. Maybe you want to label with me. This is the y length here, right? Where's the x length? Where would you put it? It's just going to be down here, right? Because it's a horizontal distance, yeah? Wow. And that's why we're not running today. Okay, have a look inside this new triangle with me, right? We'll do sine first. Can you tell me, in this triangle, what is sine 30? Sine 30 is, in that triangle, opposite on hypotenuse. Do you agree? That's what I said over here y over 1. But you know what sine 30 is, don't you? Sine 30 is a really nice, easy one to remember. It's a half. It's the only nice, easy one with no thirds, root threes, or anything like that in it. So this is simple. So that's y. So, so now I know that is a half. Okay. What about this guy? What trig ratio can I use with my 30 degrees that will compare this guy to the 1? Have a look. It's Adjacent, right? Which is why it's cos. Are you following with me? Okay. So in that little triangle, I can say cos 30 degrees equals adjacent on hypotenuse. Are you okay with that? But hopefully we remember what cos of 30 degrees is. Do you remember? It's going to be root 3 on 2 equals x. Now, just pause for a second. Over in my diagram, I drew that x as a length, right? So that's going to correspond to this. But just be careful, I'm on the unit circle. And over here I went in which direction? To the left, right? To the left for x's means negative, right? So this in fact here, the length is root 3 on 2. But the coordinate, sorry, I'm just going to write the length. The length is root 3 on 2. But the coordinate, oh, this one, is negative root 3 on 2. Does that make sense? Negative root 3 on 2. All right, this guy. Do I have to worry about the sign for this guy? He's, he's fine, right? Because he's going up, which is positive. So that's that. Okay. So ta-da, now I know cos 150 is negative 3 on 2, and sine 150 is a half. Of course, you can work out what tan 150 is just from those two, right? Uh, I'm going to do it down here because I've already got this. There's a half on the numerator. There's, careful, negative root 3 on 2 on the denominator. So what happens? What can I do with this? Uh, times it by 2. I can multiply the top and the bottom by 2, which leaves me, I'll move this negative as well, negative 1 on root 3. OK? Are you happy? Do you see how we did that? Now, you can do it by saying, uh, OK, what the 30 is, Say, memorize that sine is meant to be positive here, that means cos is meant to be negative, and then sort of do it with your ASTC thing. But I think it's much more helpful to you guys to develop the muscles to think about where is this, and what does it mean for the sides of these, left and right, up and down, okay? Now let me help you out just with one extra tip, get your calculator out, because I don't want you to rely on this method I'm about to show you, but I know what it's like when you're first learning this, and you're like, Man, is it root 3 on 2, or 1 on root 3, or 1 on root 2? I don't know, they're all sort of muddled in my head. Okay. So here's a way you can check. Right? Get your calculator there. And we're just going to test these one at a time, but I'm going to show you how to do it. We'll do an easy one first. Sine 150, okay? So that's easy to test. Sine 150, and it hands back to you faithfully exactly a half. So, so far so good, okay? But that's for the nice ones where there are no thirds, right? Now if you punch in cos 150, you look at that and you're like, gross, okay? Now because I've looked at this particular number, 0 0.866, blah, 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 I've looked at it hundreds of times, well, you might have a fancy calculator. Okay, you've got to be careful with that. I might come and have a look at it in a minute. Um, 
Because I've looked at this number, I actually recognize this as root three on two, okay? But I wouldn't expect you to. So I want you to know two things about it. Number one, it's negative. Is that what we wanted? It is, it is, right? We're expecting a negative number, okay? Now to actually check the value of it, I'm gonna take this while it's still in the display and I'm going to square it. So if you go answer squared, it hands you back three quarters. Three quarters. Is that what we were supposed to get? If I square this, do I get three quarters? And the answer is yes, okay? So that 0 0.866 whatever, or 1.73, which is root three, uh, or 1.41 or whatever, which is root two, I don't expect you guys to recognize that, but your calculator knows what they are. So if you square it, you can very easily verify that that's the right thing. We can do it one more time for this one. Chuck in 10, 150. Okay, have a look at it. The first thing you look at is the sign. Is the sign correct? It's negative. Tick, okay? And then to check that that 0 0.577 is what we think it is, you square it, and it gives you a third. Is that what I want? Do I square this and get a third? Answer, yes. So we're on the right track, okay? So that's kind of handy as a check for you, just so that you have no doubt, because I can guarantee you'll get a one mark question like this, and um, if you remember the exact ratios wrong, like when we were going through this, then maybe you'll get one or two of those confused and you can know you're in the right direction. Okay.